Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe to Intel Maniac and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. You can always support my work with your likes, comments and shares. And you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Dental Maniac. For images and transcripts, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is given here above. Did you know that a tooth as a reaction to an orthodontic treatment moves with its entire attachment apparatus? Let's see how. The attachment apparatus of a tooth, crucial for tooth movement, lies in the pedial space and occupies a space of approximately 0.5 mm in width. The pedial space acts as a fluid-filled chamber surrounded by retentive but porous walls of the lamina dura. This porous container around the tooth allows the pedial to play its role as a shock absorber. The four main elements that reside in the pedial space are the collagen fibers that make the pedial or the periodontal ligament, the cellular elements, the neural and vascular components and the tissue fluids. All of these components play a vital role in tooth movement. The collagen fiber bundles are heavy fibrous supporting structure that joins the tooth to the lamina dura of the tooth socket. It is inserted on the root cementum on one side and into the lamina dura on the other side. The cellular elements, which include the principal mesenchymal stem cells and some other cells, the neural and vascular components that help in proprioception and nutrient supply, and then the tissue fluids, which is same as the plasma of the blood, where all these structures swim. The collagen fiber bundles constantly remodel through the formative and destructive cells as a response to normal tooth function. The cells responsible for the remodeling of pedial fibers arise from the multi-differentiating mesenchymal stem cells. A multi-differentiated mesenchymal stem cell has the capability to differentiate into any of the following cells based on specific needs. Where fibroblast and fibroclast form and destroy collagen, an osteoblast and osteoclast form and destroy the alveolar bone, and then the cementoblast and cementoclast form and destroy the cementum. In a nutshell, the multi-differentiated mesenchymal cell can be differentiated into formative cells with the suffix blast and into a destructive cell with the suffix clast. Let's look into the tooth response to a normal function. The forces acting on the teeth and the PDL during mastication can range from 1 to 2 kg during a soft diet to about 50 kg and over while chewing on a hard object. When a tooth is subjected to sudden heavy loads of short duration while chewing on a hard diet, quick displacement of the tooth into the socket is prevented by the incompressible tissue fluids Hence, the force is transmitted to the alveolar bone. This causes bending of the alveolar bone in response. But remember, this phenomenon occurs when the duration of the heavy force is less than one second. Bone bending in response to normal function generates piezoelectric currents. Piezoelectric currents in mechanically stressed bone cause an activation of bone cells which is considered an important physiologic phenomenon in the general maintenance of the bone. When the duration of the heavy force is between 1 to 2 seconds, the fluid expresses through the tiny holes of the lamina dura causing the ligament to compress and allowing the tooth to move within its socket. Lastly, if the duration of the heavy force is between 3 to 5 seconds or longer, the fluid squeezes out of the tiny holes and crushing pressure is applied on the pedial fibers, hence the patient experiences a sudden pain. Although the PDL is beautifully adapted to resist forces of short duration, it rapidly loses its adaptive capability as the tissue fluids are squeezed out of its confined area. In addition, Light prolonged forces in the natural environment, that is the forces from the lips, cheeks or tongue resting against the teeth have the same potential as orthodontic forces to cause the teeth to move to a different location. But as we see, forces on upper and lower teeth on both sides are not equal 
then how come the teeth still do not move in response to the unequal natural environmental forces from the surrounding tissues? Well, this is all thanks to the metabolic activity within the periodontal ligament, which equilibrates the forces on both sides, hence stabilizing the teeth in place. The importance of PDL in the equilibrium of the forces can be well observed in a patient whose PDL is compromised, shown in this diagram. Such a patient will most probably have flaring of anterior teeth as a result of dominant tongue forces and the inability of the PDL to equilibrate forces on both sides. So this was a brief introduction to the biological basis of tooth movement. In the next part of this video, we will look into the biology of tooth movement in response to orthodontic forces. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do consider subscribing, give a thumbs up, share the video with your friends and let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.